episode of Fact or Fiction. The belief that we can travel back in time has been the genesis for many a science fiction adventure. From the original Time Machine movie, to its appearance in popular TV shows like The Big Bang Theory and Family Guy. One wonders about traveling back in time. A Western New York 7th grader from Hamburg Middle School, her discovery in an old family scrapbook of a 150-year-old photo of her father leads us back from the past. My story began when April Day was doing research at the Hamburg Public Library for my American Civil War project. I eventually was able to find the corner of the library I needed. While hunting through a number of Western New York reference books, I was able to find one with many local references to that time period. While reading through the many pages, a section of the 1860s presented itself with a photo of East Main Street in Hamburg from the Civil War period. As I continue reading, finding another early picture of Hamburg's Main Street from 1860s, I became more intrigued. I even came across a photo of a local Civil War veteran who died in 1937, Joseph Taylor Jr. Even a picture of his father's house on Taylor Road. His father was one of the first settlers in Hamburg. Knowing Taylor Road, I took it upon myself to locate that house. It still stands to this day. At this point, I decided to visit the Memorial Park, as my thirst for knowledge on the local Civil War veteran grew. This led me to the Hamburg Historical Society, and then up to Buffalo's Forest Lawn Cemetery, where I learned many veterans were buried and monuments were erected and Bidwell was the local general who fought at Gettysburg. As I finished up a day of history gathering, I recall my dad leaving an old scrapbook and a Civil War flag hidden away. I thought to myself, I must locate them, and I had an idea. They had to be in our hideaway drawer, in our heirloom hutch at home. Looking below the collectible area and figuring out how to open it, sure enough I was able to get in. There was the old scrapbook in the flag. Upon opening the scrapbook, its fragile pages aged with time, allowed me to see names from my family's past. The next page was unexpected, as there were a photo of someone who resembled my father, and another page with the man with the president, Lincoln. My dad would always joke, there's an app for that, so I decided to check his phone. Oh my gosh! Photos of the Civil War on my dad's phone? That's right, my child. Let me tell you now the stories of those days. The 49th New York Volunteer Infantry. The Buffalo Regiment contained four companies from Chautauqua County, four from Erie, one from Westchester, and one from Niagara County. They were mustered into U.S. service at Buffalo September 18, 1861 for a three-year term. In September 1862, the regiment joined the Army of the Potomac in Maryland, fought at Crampton's Gap, Antietam, and Fredericksburg, spent a winter near White Oak Church, took part in the Chancellorville campaign, and left Virginia in June 1863 for Gettysburg, the bloodiest battle of the Civil War. Many men died in battle, not so much from battle itself, but from their wounds or illness and dysentery. So what of the 49th? One of our generals, Brigadier General Daniel D. Bidwell. Born in Buffalo in 1861. Lieutenant Colonel William C. Alberger, Major William Ellis, Lieutenant Colonel George W. Johnson, Sergeant Elijah E. Ship, Private James M. Sherman, Private Freeman Miller, Private Thomas Barnum, Private Lucius W. Sampson, Private Aaron Brant 
Seavers. Sergeant Norman R. Thompson. The 155th New York Volunteer Infantry. In October 1862, more than 400 Buffalo men, most of them Irish, needed and heeded a call for volunteers and crowded into Fort Porter near the present-day Peace Bridge to become the basis of the 155th and were raised as part of Michael Corcoran's Irish Legion, a brigade containing the 155th, 164th, 170th, 175th, and 182nd New York Volunteers members of Companies I and K. The regiment fought under both the flag of the United States and a green regimental color with Irish and New York State symbols. Their first fight was in January 1863 in Virginia, and over the next two and a half years the regiment actively campaigned in the East. It served in a number of major battles, including the Siege of Suffolk, Virginia, Spotsville, North Anna, and Cold Harbor, where the regiment saw losses. The 155th took part in the Siege of Petersburg and fighting around that area, and it was forces that chased the Army of Northern Virginia to its destiny, being present at Appomattox Courthouse. Those that fought in the 155th included Colonel Hugh Flood, Captain John McAlley. The scene was surreal. Ulysses S. Grant on one side of the room, General Lee on the other. The surrender signing took place. Here a picture of the actual room. The house that it was signed in. Many people and how it looks today, many people don't realize that this surrender document was actually signed not in that courthouse, which still stands today, but in that house in Appomattox. Thus, the end of the Civil War. Western New York. Hamburg. Memorial Park, a tribute to those fallen, including Civil War. Sergeant Albert C. Prescott from Hamburg. First Sergeant Horace W. White. Also, an important note. Private Joseph D. Taylor, who became 5th Sergeant Joseph D. Taylor, Jr. Their house still stands on Taylor Road. Mr. Taylor was one of the last surviving Civil War veterans. Now I, and hopefully you, understand what General Bidwell and others did to contribute into the Civil War in the Buffalo region. Now finishing with our fact or fiction, we realize that the facts are... A monument sits at Gettysburg Battlefield in honor to the 49th Regiment. Many Civil War veterans are buried at Forest Lawn Cemetery in Buffalo. Buffalo's Brigadier General Daniel D. Bidwell, who was killed at Cedar Creek, Virginia in November 1864 and is buried in Forest Lawn Cemetery with a monument noting the battles in which he fought. In addition, a parkway named after him as well as Colonial Circle where today a statue in his honor still stands. Local History, Hamburg Baptist Church, as it stood then and today. The Taylor House, then and today. The fiction is, my dad didn't really travel back 150 years with this app.